In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up VS Code for editing Markdown the same way that I have NeoVim set up. Notice that I'm in VS Code here and I'm in NeoVim. Notice that it says Westerm on the top. This is my terminal emulator, but this is NeoVim. This is the editor that I use for editing Markdown files. And this is VS Code. I know that my NeoVim followers must be wondering if I'll be switching full time to VS Code or the reason I'm making this video. And no, I'm not switching. I just want to make the Markdown editing experience for people that don't use NeoVim not as horrible as the default VS Code Markdown editing experience. When you work at a company, not everyone is going to be using NeoVim. Actually, almost nobody is going to be using NeoVim. Most of the people are going to be using VS Code or other editors. So I just want to help them to set up something useful and nice to work with. If you like the theme that you're looking at right now, I created it. If you come here to extensions, you're going to see this link our zoo colors. Make sure to install it. I created this theme yesterday, uh, so expect some changes. Install it and it's going to look the exact same way that it looks here, which is the exact same theme that I have configured in my NeoVim and everywhere else in my system, in Sketchy Bar, in my Tmux Bar, Starship Prompt, everywhere else. So that's one of the extensions that I'm going to be discussing today. Colors. Let me just minimize this here. I will not go in depth on this video. Just want to see how interested people are. If you're interested in me making more videos like this, let me know down in the comments and I can go in depth in other topics like modifying the prettier configuration, markdown lint configuration, and a lot more things. Just going to close this file here. Let's look at the extensions then. First, we have this markdown all in one. Make sure you get this. This is going to make your life way easier. It gives you a lot of different features. Keyboard shortcuts, to do items, it seems here, table of contents. But my favorite one is this list editing, which is basically bullet points. As you can tell in my notes, I do use a lot of bullet points. So if I'm at the end of this line and I hit enter, it's going to automatically create a bullet point below and I can keep writing stuff here, type something here, hit enter, and it's going to create an, another bullet point below. So if you keep scrolling down here, you're going to see that there are other options. You can get tables, tasks, auto completions. It seems I haven't explored all of the options that this plugin has, but you can take a look. Moving on to the next plugin, Markdown Header Coloring. This is what you see here on the screen. Notice that the headers are of different colors. Heading 2 Markdown, green, heading 3. It's kind of bluish and it matches the configuration that I have in NeoVim. That's the only reason why I set them up that way. If you install my theme and you want to get these colors for your Markdown headings, you will have to get the configuration from my dot files. Let me open that in NeoVim real quick. I'm just going to open the settings.json file. This is in this folder, VS Code dash settings.json. This is the exact same file that you open here in VS Code when you press Shift Command P, I think. Yeah, Shift Command P. And you type here JSON, open user settings JSON. So if you open this, it's going to bring this file up settings.json. You're going to find the settings for my markdown headings here. So just make sure to grab this section. This is for heading one. Here's the color of the text, basically. And here is the color of the background. So notice this is heading one, heading two, three, four, five, and six. This settings.json file is, as I said, in my dot .files. Let me go to NeoVim real quick. I have a key map here in NeoVim that takes me to my dot .files. I just press leader, fsn file, capital G as in GitHub. It's going to bring me over to the file directly. I'm going to leave a link to my dot .files so you can grab all the settings, but everything is in there. If I make a change to this settings.json file, it's going to directly modify the VS Code configuration because I configured a sim link that points to this file in the VS Code directory. And the good thing is that I just upload my configuration to GitHub. So that's for Markdown header colors. Moving on to the next plugin is this one, Markdown Lint. I'm a big fan of this plugin. This is a linter. And what it basically does is just allows you to follow Markdown standards in your files. This is extremely useful if you work at a company and you need to come to agreements on how your team is going to edit Markdown. The team can follow all of the rules provided by this plugin and be in the same page. So let me show you how it works. If I'm on this file, I try to repeat this heading. Just going to copy it YYP, going to paste it below. You're going to notice that it's going to start complaining and you're going to be able to see the error. If you just hover over this, notice that it says MD024, no duplicate heading, multiple headings with the same content. So just make sure to follow the rules. If I try to add a heading one here in the middle of the document, heading one, notice that it's also going to complain. I'm just going to save this. Notice that it's complaining that you should have a single H1 heading in your document. 
If you have used Markdown for quite some time and you were not aware of this plugin, once you install it, you will find hundreds, if not thousands of errors because you were not following any Markdown guidelines. So don't rush into fixing anything. Just take your time. But I wouldn't worry about fixing existing files. Just from now on, make sure that your files follow the guidelines. There are some rules that you can ignore if you want. If I come here to the Explorer, you're going to find here a Markdown lint.yaml file. It's going to open that and notice that it's at the root level of my project. This is my project. Here is the file, the root level. And here's where you can disable some rules. Don't disable rules, just disable the ones that you specifically need. Because if you just start disabling stuff, you're going to lose the purpose of having a linter. I only disable a few rules that have conflicts with Prettier, but I auto format my files. So I'm going to show you how to set up Prettier in a little bit as well. Oh, I just noticed that the font of this is the same color as the background of this. So I'll have to update this eventually. What else do we have here? If we scroll down here, you're going to find marks man. And this integrates a language server into VS Code for the Lightful Markdown note taking experience. So what is this for? Notice that it gives you this hover preview when you have a link. It gives you auto completion when you try to link two documents together, or if you want to link a subsection of the current document, as in here. Let me show you how I use it. I'm gonna bring another file that I have here, a VS Code test. Let me open this file, and if I scroll down here, you're gonna notice that I have a link here. These are wiki links, I think they're called. Notice that it has two brackets. So if I put my mouse over this, you will be able to see this other document. Here is this download section for that document. I have this other note here, which is in a completely different path. So you don't have to worry about specifying the paths for the different notes. How can you get to a link? I think if you press command click, it takes you there, command click. But an easier way, if you're using Vim motions the same way that I am, I just press GD, which is go to definition. And if I press control O, takes me back to where I was. I'll show you how to set up the Vim plugin as well. Same thing here. If I press GD, it's going to take me there. Control O is going to take me back. Notice the path for this file is in this 999-test directory. Here is the file. But if I go to this other file, you're going to notice that it's in a completely different path. 025, knowledge, tech, notes, infra, XCPNG, XOA. So you don't have to worry about the path. You just specify the name of the file here. And if you want to reference a specific heading, you do it this way. This is the download markdown heading in that file. After the installation, you need to follow step number two. You need to add this .marksman.tumble file to your workspace root folder. The extension is automatically activated only when this file is present. So what does this mean? If we come back here to the root directory, you're going to notice that here is the same file at the root level dot marksman .tumble. When you create this file, close VS code, reopen it, and you're going to see here at the bottom or here, I don't know where, somewhere that marksman is being installed. So just be patient because it takes a few seconds or minutes. Moving on to the next plugin, Prettier. This is one of my favorite plugins. Not everyone likes it, but I do really love it. I use it to auto format my markdown files. I don't auto format any other files just for markdown, but it's up to you. Let me go back to my NeoVim file. I'm just going to look for Prettier here. Here is the line that specifies which formatter to use. Notice that the default formatter is set to null. So there is no formatter except for the ones that you specify here. For JSONC files, I set it to Prettier. This is the way that you do it. And for Markdown files, I also set it to Prettier. What is this JSONC? Is this file? It's just a special type of file that VS Code has that has comments. This JSON does not have comments. So I just enabled auto formatting so that VS Code auto formats this file when I'm editing it in VS Code. So that's the only thing you need to configure for Prettier to work. Now let me show you what Prettier does. For example, I add a lot of different lines here. I add some lines here and all my different files are completely messed up like this. For example, I don't want to manually be editing all my files. I would like them to follow some auto formatting rules. So they're all the same. Prettier and the linter for me work in conjunction. I have them both enabled and I love the way that my files are consistent everywhere. If I save this file, just going to press command S, Prettier kicks in, auto formats the file. Prettier also wraps by default at 80 characters. So if you notice, this line is 80 characters and it automatically broke it to the next line down here. There's a way to disable it. If you want a video on that, let me know. But I would highly recommend you to enable Prettier as it makes things way easier to format. You notice that it auto formatted when I saved. That's a setting that you need to change, which is right here. Editor format on save, set this to true. Otherwise, you have to manually auto format each file. You have to right click and format document, but we don't want that. 
And last but not least, Vim. This is one of the best things that you can do for your career in your life. Even if you're going to stay in VS Code, make sure to enable this. It's going to be painful at first. I know you're going to hate it. But once you get used to it, you will be able to navigate your files in a whole other level. After you install this plugin, there are some things that you need to do. Here under installation, you're going to find some commands. I'm not sure why this does not show correctly. Let's go to the repo. We can see it there. If we scroll down here, here are the commands. I copied everything, pasted it, but it didn't quite work. So just make sure you grab one at a time, paste them in your terminal, just a regular terminal window here, for example. And that is what is going to allow you to do this, to move to the right, to the left, down or up. Because if you don't run those commands, you will not be able to move. You're just going to stay stuck there and you're going to see a little pop up that gives you options or variations for the letters. So just make sure you run those commands. After you run those commands, quit VS Code, and this is very important, make sure that you log out of your computer and then log back in. What do I mean by log out? Come here, log out. Just quitting VS Code is not going to do it. So what does this plugin allow you to do then? You can navigate files with the motions. You can comment stuff. Notice that I press GCC. If I press GCC again, I can uncomment. Let me close this sidebar. Let's see here in this JSONs file. Notice that I have a lot of different comments. I'm just going to grab this section here and I'm going to press GC. Notice that it commented the entire line. I'm gonna press U to undo those changes. You can navigate using the motions. I can figure some key maps. GL takes me to the end of the line. GH takes me to the beginning of the line. GG takes you to the top. Capital G takes you to the bottom. Those are just regular Vim motions. You can select text in visual mode. I did right now. And you can do a lot of other things. Let's go through the settings real quick in this file. I'm going to see what's important and what you should be aware of. Zoom level, I set it to one because the font and the whole interface was too small for me. Maybe I'm getting old. Font family, I set it to this. Make sure you have the font installed. Ligatures, I set it to true. I added this and set them all white because that's the way that I have it in NeoVim. You notice all of my symbols or brackets are white. So that's why I set them up like this. If you don't want to have them white, don't enable this. They're going to be using the default VS Code color. Colors. What else do we have here? Minimap. That's the thing that shows up here on the right hand side. I don't understand that. Doesn't make any sense. So we already went through the default formatter, formatter here as well. Headings. We already went through this as well. What else do we have down here? These are the Vim settings. Leader. I set it to space. These are just sane settings. Make sure you add them. This is really important. Set this to true because when you copy with Y, it copies to your clipboard. If you don't have this setting and you copy with Y, it's not going to copy to your clipboard. Fold fix true. Let me show you what this does. Let me go to the markdown file and I'm just going to hit enter here to fold. That's something that I configured. Enter to fold and I can scroll down up. Does not unfold when I go over the markdown heading. Let's go back here. Insert mode. This is to go out of insert mode. So if I'm in insert mode and I'm editing this line, testing, I want to go out of insert mode. I'm used to pressing KJ. That's the way that I have been doing it for quite a long time. So I just go out of insert mode with KJ. People usually use escape and they have it on the caps lock key, but I find this way faster. Just got used to it. What else do we have here? Fold with enter. That's what I just showed you a minute ago. Leader MP shows me the markdown preview. Let me go to a markdown document and I press leader MP. Shows me this preview. What else? Splits. Because you use splits. Go to the beginning and end of the line with GL and G H the sidebar leader E leader E hides it or shows it when I press leader E search in files leader S G that's the way that I do it in Neovim that's the only reason why I configured it this way just gonna close this this is the way that I find files in Neovim if I press leader F F it's gonna bring this up so I can search for stuff and I press escape here to quit this menu close the current tab that's the way that I do it in Neovim as well so if I move to this leader B D I'm gonna hit here don't save because that's the way that I close buffers in Neovim leader B D it doesn't work here because this is not a file that I'm editing. But if I come here and I press leader BD, it closes it. When you're in visual mode, you can indent stuff greater than or less than. You can move selected lines with capital J, capital K. If I want to select to the beginning of the line or to the end of the line when in visual mode, let's say that I'm selecting this, but I want to select to the end of the line. I'm used to pressing GL any of them. So that's why I configure that. Or the same thing if I'm here, I'm in visual mode and I want to select to the beginning, I press GH, just something that I'm used to any of them as well. Mm, I don't know what this is. And this is my team.
I have a lot of different videos related to Markdown and they're usually NeoVim related. I have some Obsidian videos as well, but if you want to learn more about Markdown NeoVim, go and check out the videos. These shown here are the videos that I currently have. If you want to know about my entire Markdown workflow in NeoVim, go and check this video out. It's a little bit long, 48 minutes, but it has a lot of tips and tricks that you can use if you're getting started with Markdown in NeoVim or if you want to get started with Markdown in NeoVim. If you don't know what NeoVim is and you would like to install it to test it out, go and watch this video. If you're on macOS, just show you how to install NeoVim. After this video, I show you how to get my configuration, which is the one that you see here, my settings, the theme, everything. So go and watch that and let me know. Let me know what you think about this video. If you want me to make more content like this, let me know as well. More VS Code related content. I'm fine with it. If you learned something useful, let me know down below as well. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.